On my return from a Christian mission to prison inmates in the jails of the Philippines in 2004, I sought fellowship with like-minded Christians in Hampshire, with those who believe the gospel of Christ, and I was not into happy, clappy religion. Life is far more serious than to hear, smile, God loves you. You see, I was a former criminal who had been converted from a life of crime on the 16th of January 1970. My older brother Michael was unaffected by my conversion and me turned my back on my criminal past. He went on to live a flamboyant lifestyle without reference to God. He was an ungodly, worldly man, affluent and prosperous in many ways. He had his first Rolls Royce at the age of 46, but got into trouble lost his business, went through a divorce. I was eventually sentenced to a 16 year prison sentence in the Philippines where he died at the age of 54 years old of tuberculosis. But he did not die the death of a sinner or an unrighteous man because he too in that prison was converted from a sinful way of life to follow Christ. He is buried in a Longapo city cemetery in the Philippines. He had, whilst in prison, towards the end of 99, learned who the Lord Jesus was and was convinced that he was the son of the living God and was baptised as a Christian within the prison, having turned his back on his criminal past at the age of 50 to follow Christ. It was his conversion to Christianity that moved Gordon Smith and I to go on a mission of help to assist Michael in the Philippines in 2001 and many other criminals to help them on their own roads of reformation. You see, I had started out well as a young Christian at the age of 21, learned the gospel of Christ through my own reading and study, and came to a good understanding of the doctrines of grace, the sovereignty of God in salvation, creation and providence. In my endeavours to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, I felt compelled to withdraw for membership of the Beaton Strict and Particular Baptist Church in 1984 over matters of conscience. The church had fallen from teaching the doctrines of grace to promoting the law of Moses as its rule of life. It had lost its way and would not or could not hear me giving them the warning. My life after that was not so straightforward or honourable as I turned away from God in unbelief towards the end of 1990 and fell into serious sin and adultery. Too many bad ways to mention. This led to a divorce in 1996. However, it was the good news of my brother's own conversion to Christ and my own sense of sinfulness and the need of salvation from my backslidden state that, according to the mercy and grace of God, was able to return like a prodigal son to my father's house. This recovery was through repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ after which I felt it only right to write and testify of my conversion from crime to Christ along with that of my brother Michael, my brother. We were both convicted criminals of the past but now Christian. Our mission to the Philippines was successful and is ongoing to this day but we did hit opposition from the religious minded people in the religious world having no real experience of salvation. It was on my return to the UK in 2006 I sought fellowship with those who professed the same belief as I had gained in the Lord Jesus Christ but sadly I was not accepted and was told by a minister of the gospel, a gospel standard minister from Bournemouth, that my understanding and views of the Christian religion and that of our relationship to the law of Moses and the gospel of Christ was a gross error. You see, I maintained the Sabbath day prescribed by Moses was a Saturday, was the seventh day of the week, which was not the first day of the week, and that the legal Sabbath given by Moses was only a shadow of the real spiritual rest that believers would have in Christ today. He rejected my understanding and stated very clearly that I would not be accepted in membership of any gospel standard church in the country. He was clearly wrong and himself in error. However, as a result of that and my own previous run-ins with religious-minded people and groups, 
not having an understanding of the gospel of the grace of God that drove me to self-imposed exile for a number of years. I have therefore been in exile, self-imposed exile, since that rejection, all of which I have written about in my latest book, an autobiography entitled, And Such Were Some of You. So since that time, and with the aid of the COVID lockdown, I've devoted myself to writing about my Christian experience and the teachings of the gospel, and also with the republication of very worthwhile Christian literature. All of this with a view to educate and help others learn the gospel and turn from sin, lives of emptiness, and to be reconciled to God through faith and obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. My latest publication this week, entitled The Christian Doctrine of Predestination, Proved by Fulfilled Biblical Prophecy. The fruits of my labours are the publication of several books, all relating to the Christian faith and Christian doctrine. Also, the republication of over a hundred classical Christian books as paperbacks, Kindle, PDFs and audiobooks, all available from Amazon.co.uk and Amazon.com and many cases made available free upon asking via file transfer on the internet. David Clark, this day 6th of February 2021 and on the 16th of February this month I will be 72 years old. How about that? Now there we are, the Trojan Horse Mission, fulfilling their commission, setting the captives free. Amen.